So I love to read, but sometimes I have to remind myself that I love to read. As in like, sometimes it's just easier to like take in information through something visual, like a documentary or a vlog. But I do, I love to read and this year I've read quite a few books. So I'm gonna go through them and recommend some good ones to you. And here we go. <laughs> Not like anyone really cares what books I read, right? Love That Last by Jeff and Alyssa Bethke. In our home, we're big fans of the Bethkes. And this year we did 2018 as the year of romance. So I bought this book as like a Kickstarter for that project. But I didn't get around to reading it for like a few months later. But I can tell you, as soon as I cracked open the cover, I couldn't stop reading it. It's so good guys. If you're single, if you're in a relationship, if you're engaged, if you are married, heck, even if you're divorced, this book is for you. It's all about the couple's unique meet cute. Huh? Here I go using film terms that we all learned from the holiday. And how their past affected their getting together and their staying together. There's like some awesome little funny stories, but also some real truths. They cover loneliness, pornography, sex, singleness, breaking up, long distance relationships, and marriage. All tied up in the bow of God's grace and love for us. And his heart for relationships done well. Uh, so I didn't actually decide a rating system for how I was gonna do this. So I'm just gonna give this book four of these. Jesus's by Judah Smith. Oh, this book. All about the nature and character of Jesus and how easy it is to get it twisted. I wish I had a paper copy so I could just highlight it and like stick up the pages around the house. I found this book super challenging because it not only put my own self image to question, but also the image of God that I'd created in my mind. Just listen to this quote. God is not in a hurry to fix us. Our behavior is not his first priority. We are his first priority. Loving us, knowing us, affirming us and protecting us. That is his top goal and his main concern. Our fight against sin is noble and good, but make no mistake, we are not fighting to be righteous. We already are righteous. We are simply learning to live outwardly like the person we are inwardly. If you can buy it, buy it. Five of these. The More of Less by Joshua Becker. Featured on The Minimalist documentary on Netflix called The Minimalist. Joshua Becker unpacks minimalism and how it relates to the character of Jesus. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands here. If you are wondering why your Christian friends are suddenly calling themselves minimalists, or you think it sounds like its own religion, read this book. Four of these. Need by Joel Chabonneau. 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 I am not very good at accents. Every now and then I buy a fictional dystopian novel just to take up the edge off all the knowledge that I've been reading throughout the year. So this year I bought the book Need and I read it within a week. Dan could barely keep up with the story, as every time I filled him in, new characters came or died. It's just very dramatic. But the book is about this girl and she gets sucked into the social media site that's like destroying her high school and like manipulating students into doing differing acts of like suspense and then like legitimate crimes in order to get whatever they've asked the website for. I should have mentioned that before. If you need a little pick-me-up, no, wrong word. It's super intense. But if you're looking for a good distraction, this is a good one. Three of these. The Forgotten God by Francis Chan. If you've ever tripped up on who, what, or why the Holy Spirit is, read this book. It is just really, really good. Unashamed by Christine Kane. This book is like a testimony and reflection of Christine's life. Christine, I say it like she's my buddy. If you struggle with shame, abuse, worry, or you've ever been through a trauma or bullying, this book will help. The enemy always wants us to believe that we need to stop hurting before we can move on. What a lie! We must move forward even if it's painful. The freedom on the other side is what we need and want. <sighs> it's beautiful. Three of these. 31 ways to love and encourage him or her. 
yet another book by the Beth Keys. Except this one is a little different because it's a workbook. So each day you're given like a little story and then an area to write your own reflection. The wife's book is written by Alyssa and the husband's book is written by Jeff. Each writer gives you a different creative exercise and each exercise is supposed to give you a creative way to love or encourage your spouse. Ugh, I hate that word spouse. Your hubby, your lover, your husband, your lobster. Cause she's your lobster. <laughs> each day is different and each book is unique in its own way but also they kind of go in sync. So it's not like you're gonna be getting in fights because one of your challenges is to take the other one out and the other person's challenge for that day is to stay in and get cozy. They work together. I know they do versions of these books for couples who aren't married yet. So if your love life is getting a little stale, pick up these workbooks. The stories and exercises are really fun, but at the end of the day, it's only what you make of it. We actually really enjoyed them and went through them twice because we're nerds. But that's because we realized how easy it is to love someone in a new and surprising way. But it also got us having conversations that we'd kind of forgotten to have. You know, time just goes by and then you're just sat there like, how's your day? How's your day? What should we watch? Okay, let's watch that. Boring, stale. So these books get by the these things. <laughs> Unseen by Sarah Haggerty. This book. I have highlighted something from literally every page. This book almost made me cry. And when I say almost, I mean definitely. It moved me, it made me laugh, and it challenged me to no end. Somehow it both woke me up and then slowed me right back down again, in a good way. If any of these things are of any interest to you, read this book and then read it again. It is life-changing. The author and my buddy, I wish, Sarah, shares her testimony, her struggle with infertility, her sheer raw emotions and hidden thoughts, and where God met her in every single one of those dark, hidden, lonely moments. It's beautiful. She's found a way to take her attention off of social media, off of what the world says of her, and onto what her identity is in the eyes of God. And this Flipping book can have like all of these, six of these, ten of these. I don't even care about the weird numerical value system I put into place anymore. She smashed it and she won't even know because she's living such an intentional slow paced life that she doesn't have the time to indulge fans like me because she's living in the affirmations of what God says about her and they're just... She just nailed it man. Like... Uh, I may just read it again. If you want to read it with me, let me know in the comments below and I will figure that out somehow. That would be fun. Reading with strangers. Strangers book club. La, 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 la. I'm currently working my way through this book in the mornings. Practicing His Presence by Brother Lawrence and Frank Laubach. Laubach? Laubach. I'm pages in and I already have my highlighter out. And I'm pretty sure this book belonged to my friend Ellie. So just send me your address and I'll buy you a new copy, okay? Thanks. My bad. I would love to know what books you guys are reading. Unless they're historical. Anyways, let me know what you're reading, what you're loving, and any book recommendations you have for me in 2019. Bye for now, guys.